All right, so in the previous video, we established what product development was, which gave us an understanding of the life of a product before it's ready for a launch. So from an idea phase to executing and launching, that's the product development stage. In this one, we're gonna look at what happens to the product once it's launched and the entire life of it thereafter. And this topic is called the product life cycle. Now what you see here is a graph and on the Y axis here, you'll see the sales numbers and on the X axis here, you have the number of years. I will start off by telling you that all product life cycles, whatever the product is, whichever industry you're operating in, will always have this shape for their product life cycle. The difference is for some businesses, the product life cycle will be shorter. It may not last five years. For some, it may last for decades. So that's the only difference. Now, let's try to break it down. What is really this graph telling us? First of all, we know that at the start, when you're just developing the product, there are no sales happening. So anything before the first sale happens, that's your product development stage. And I'm just gonna show that by this white area here, this is where you were developing the product. Now, what are the things that are um, common in a development stage? You have no sales and you are definitely making losses because there's a lot of money being spent on research and such things. After the launch of the product, that's when you start to make some of the money back. Now, what happens is all products will be launched obviously on day one. And on the first day, it's not going to be so easy for the customers to start converting to your products. You might be a copycat, so it may take a while before customers come to you. Or you might be a completely new product and people don't understand it really. Maybe you just haven't done enough promotion and that takes time. And the word to go around, you know, when, when customers refer products from between them themselves, we call their word of mouth promotions. And that also takes a little bit of while. So all businesses will increase will experience a slow start to their life. And this initial stage of the product is known as introduction as shown by this green area here. So there are certain things that are common in all businesses introduction stage. One, you still have very low sales. And they're still probably in losses because you're still trying to recover the money that you spend in development. Now all products will eventually come out of this initial tough period of introduction and start seeing an upturn in their fortunes. Maybe consumers finally understand your product. Enough people know about your product. There's enough good reviews out there. Maybe you've refined the product even more. You've come out with more varieties to match the different market segments that you've identified. So all these factors, and of course, you also have a better understanding of what the market is like. So with more time that you spend selling the product, the more understanding you have, it will, get, it will be getting better and better and better. And that's where more customers start converting to you. That stage is known as your growth phase. This is again, happy time for the business. As shown in this blue area. So when we are to going through a growth phase, this is where my sales numbers are going up and up and up and they are rapidly rising. And this is where you bring in the profit. So this is the good time for a business. Now, the thing about all products is that at some point, their sales will start to plateau out, level out, reach a peak, and whenever you, you reach to the peak of a mountain, you know the only way is down. So after a peak, you will see a decrease or a downturn in the sales of your product. All businesses, all, sorry, all products will face this problem. And this stage is known as the maturity stage. You may also know this by another word, saturation is the same thing. So you may call it saturation or maturity as shown by this yellow portion of the graph. Yeah. This is where, yes, you see your sales being at the highest level, but you also experience a downturn 
in your sales. So things are not looking so good. Now, why might this be happening? Maybe your product is just too old and you haven't come up, come up with new variants or new uses of it. Maybe your product was so good that you have other big competitors enter the market and steal your thunder, become the market leader, and then you're left behind. So things aren't going your way. And of course, it's, it's there where you will also see your profit go down from this particular product. This is your alarm bell situation. Because after this, it's all downhill. We call that stage decline, shown by this red area, alarm bells. So businesses need to do something about it. And smart businesses will realize that when their, sales, when their sales start to slow down, not when you reach the decline stage. Okay, so all products will go through this stage and these are the characteristics of each of those stages. Now, as soon as a product reaches its maturity stage, that's where the marketing gurus will get back to work. They have to find a way to fight back to gain this momentum back and start seeing more growth come back to the product. And ideally, this is what you want to see. You want to see an upward trend in your sales again, right? Anytime a business wishes to bring this graph up again and bring in more sales for the business, we call this an extension strategy, okay? And I'll tell you a little secret. An extension strategy is nothing but a new marketing mix. It simply means you've got to redesign your four Ps. Go back to the drawing board. Maybe it's a product that you need to change. Maybe you need to bring it in, in a new color. Maybe you need to make it smaller or bigger. Whatever you have to do, change the product or change the price. Maybe it's too expensive. Make it cheaper. Promote it, target more audiences, find new uses for your product, go through social media. And finally, make yourself available in newer and more places under the place part of 4Ps. So every time you redesign your marketing mix to give your product a new oomph, new life, that's what you call an extension strategy. Now, Whenever you see the word portfolio, the word portfolio simply means a collection of things. Okay, when you get a lot of photographs taken for let's say um, a photo shoot, that's called a photo portfolio. When you have a lot of investments in different places, stock market, uh, bond market, property, gold, dollars, things like that, we call that an investment portfolio. Similarly, a product portfolio is also a collection. And since the word associated with it is product, it simply means that it's the collection of product that a company is selling. So the complete range being offered by the business. So when I say Coca-Cola, only the drink Coca-Cola itself comes to mind, right? But Coca-Cola makes Fanta, Coca-Cola also makes Sprite. So that's their collection. They other products they are selling which complete their product range. And we can use a product portfolio analysis to gain sense of what happens to these businesses when they reach different stages of their lives. So let me show you a little example. Again, I'm gonna use a similar graph to the one I use for my product life cycle. And the one that we looked at on the previous slide, that was a single product, product life cycle. We just saw the one product. But we know that businesses do not and should not restrict themselves to just one product. Just for the simple reason of diversification. If you diversify, I mean, not everybody likes to drink Coca-Cola. Some people prefer the Fanta, some people prefer Sprite. So you know there's different kinds of customers out there. We know that through market segmentation. And in order to gain more of your revenue, you need to be able to get it to different types of people. And for that reason, you have variety. So that if, you doesn't if, if your customer doesn't like one thing, they might like another. In the end, the money's still coming to you. So it helps you to diversify your risk of failure by having more options. And how, again, taking the example of Coca-Cola, for example, of course, Coca-Cola would have launched 
Coca-Cola first and a typical product life cycle would look like this. After a while, they might have decided, oh, it's time to launch Sprite. And finally, they would have thought, hey, it's also time to bring out the Fanta. So three very poorly drawn diagrams, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to show here, that this is my Coca-Cola. This is, let's say, the launch of Sprite. And this is a Fanta. Now, I'm just using arbitrary numbers there to explain it to you. Don't hold me to these. Now, what a product portfolio analysis helps you to do is you can draw a line in any one particular year. So when I say that, let's say I want to see in year three, what is happening with all my products? Where are they in each of their life cycles and what does it mean for the business? So for example, as we see this line on the year three drawn, we can see that it's intersecting all three of our products at different stages. And let's try to look at them and understand what level of their individual life cycles are they at? If we look at Coca-Cola, and if you remember your product life cycle from the previous slide, what stage are we at? That's right. I hope you said maturity. When I look at Sprite, clearly it's in its growth phase. And finally, when I look at Fanta, it's still coming out of its, that's right, introduction or simply intro. So at any given point in time, since your products were launched at different times, obviously they will be at different stages of their life cycle. Now I know that as a company, I need to manage them well in order to gain my competitive advantage, being able to sell more, whatever my objective is, the market objective is. And it would also mean that a product that might be reaching its maturity needs some support, which Coca-Cola is in this day. And I know that Sprite is doing well. They're making money. And as a business and the marketing department, you can start allocating your money, your resources, and your time, especially money when it comes to promotion, you need a lot of that. So you can take some of the profits coming out of Sprite and use it to change the fortunes of Coca-Cola. Or take some of the money from Sprite and give it to Fanta and make sure their promotions are solid in the introduction phase so that they can reach their growth faster. So a business uses, and particularly the marketing department of course, uses the product portfolio analysis to be able to gauge where each product is and exactly which one needs our help and which one's making the most money for us. Okay, product portfolio analysis. And that completes the product part of the four P's.